Yeah, a lot of uh, different ways to turn that turbine. Nuclear reactors use that energy to heat up water. All right. So now we need to think about where does that energy come from in a nuclear reaction. In a chemical reaction, we know where that energy comes from. It comes from the... Yeah. Should I sit down again? Yes. Where does that, where does, in a chemical reaction, would it be a redox reaction, combustion reaction, whatever chemical reaction, where does that energy come from? Yeah. If it's an exothermic reaction. Heat. Uh, reactants. Electrons. I'm liking where that's going, maybe. Not the nucleus. <laughs> The bonds, yeah, the bonds, the, what type, where, the potential energy of the bonds, right? Where those electrons are at, all right, and whatever type of bond they are. So in chemical reactions, the energy comes from the potential energy of the bonds, all right? We go from high potential energy to low potential energy, that energy transferred to the surroundings, and we can use that, okay? So that's how we, that's one way we can uh, turn a turbine. We can do a chemical reaction. Transfer that energy to the surroundings, the water. Heat up the steam, turn the turbine. Where does the energy come from in a nuclear reaction? There's no bonds. Now we're just talking about the nucleus. All right, so where does that energy come from? It comes from actually a pretty, uh, uh, a very different uh, mechanism. You know, going back to potential energy, uh, but a very different mechanism than bonds and potential energy. So here's that uh, reaction again. That's uh, the chain reaction for uranium-235. It turns out, if you add up the atomic masses of uranium-235 isotope and a neutron, and this barium-140, krypton-93, and three neutrons, you add up their atomic masses, the atomic masses on the reactant side is 236.05258 atomic mass units, and the uh, Mass of the products is 235.86769 atomic mass units. What is kind of funny about that? They're not the same. Okay? They're not the same. That is, that, that's, you would think, okay? We have this funny little thing called law of conservation of mass, all right? Where we said that matter can't be created or destroyed. And I said that way back in week one of General Chemistry 1. Remember that? Remember those good times? Oh, good, Gen Chem 1, all oh, the good days. But do you remember when I said law of conservation of mass and where matter can't be created or destroyed? Um, eh, it's kind of a lie. I mean, it, I mean, it's not like 100%. It's not a lie, lie. Like, I'm not, I wasn't lying to you. But it's like not 100% correct. Okay? It's a, you know, yeah, I said it with confidence and you believe me. Okay? <laughs> Turns out that um, in chemical reactions, the change in mass is so insignificant uh, that we can just, eh, it's negligible, okay? But this is where in nuclear reactions, it does become a very important part of how it can produce energy. The mass does go down, all right? And one of the first people to, per persons to figure out why or how this can produce energy, the mass going down producing energy, was this guy. Einstein. Yes, this is Albert Einstein. He figured it out, okay? Now again, I know I talked about this in Gen Chem 1, but some of you didn't have to put up with me. You're so lucky. Um, this is the picture you should show of Albert Einstein when you show pictures of Albert Einstein, all right? You do not, you shouldn't have to show this one, okay? Crazy old Al, okay? Young Dapper Al. This is what he looked like when he was working on all these equations, okay? So that's the picture you should show. And he happened to come up with a little equation, all right? And that equation was E equals MC squared. He came up with that equation. Right. And sold a bunch of t-shirts. So E, what would uh, E stand for? Energy. energy. It does stand for energy. What do you think M stands for? Mass. And then C, what did C stand for? Speed of light. All right, so 
energy is equal to the mass of a substance. So mass is just a form of energy. And so when that nuclear reaction goes, it's losing mass, where'd that mass go? It's getting turned into energy. That is what's how uh, nuclear fusion reactions and nuclear fission reactions produce energy. Their mass is changed. It's called a mass defect. Okay, the mass changes and it's producing energy. So we can even calculate how much energy uh, is being produced in that nuclear equation. First, I just figure out how much energy was lost. So let's take um, 236. 0.0528 AMUs minus 235.86769 AMUs. Zero point one eight five. One one. I I uh my bad. I uh, forgot a fiver in there, so if someone could uh, recalculate that for me. My bad. Point one eight four nine nine. Thank you. All right, so zero point one eight four nine or nine or that means nine atomic mass units. All right, so that's how much mass was turned into energy. So let's figure out how much energy that translates to. Okay, so what was my mass? One eight four nine nine. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at those special effects. All right. So I, if I'm eventually, we're going to want joules, okay, for our units of energy, and a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So I got to convert this to kilograms. And so for that, I need to know the equality between AMUs and kilograms. And you know what? I don't remember the equality between AMUs and kilograms. So does someone have their equation sheet on them? It's like one point, okay, first, no, no, I got to guess. 1.37, dang it, 1.6, that's what I meant, 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27th? See, I was going to get that. Okay, that's, uh, so 1 AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. Thank you. Handy dandy equation sheets, they have it all. You're gonna to want to keep those after this class. Just, just laminate it. Right. Three point zero seven times ten to the negative twenty eight. Thank you. Kilograms. All right, so let's plug that in. 3.07 times 10 to the negative 28th kilograms times the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. 9.21 9 times 10 to the negative 20. 
times 10 to the negative 20, and a kilogram meter squared per second squared, that is a joule. Nine point two one times ten to the negative twentieth. Is that a big number or a small number? Yeah. That's a small number. I thought nuclear reactions were all kinds of uh, cool and could produce a lot of energy. That's a small number. But that is just for one atom. That's per atom. That was just for one uranium atom uh, decaying in that nuclear fission reaction. So let's figure out how many, how much energy that was per mole. You got something different. Would you like to show you? 2.76? Times 10 to the negative? 11? 11. No? 2.76? Times 10 to the negative 11? You got a different number? 2.76, negative 11? Uh, why, don't I, why don't I throw this in my head? You know, I haven't helped out at all this semester. I'll just do, I'll help you guys out. I'll do something around here. Negative 28 times, did you square it? Did everybody square it? All right, 3E8 squared. You didn't do that? <laughs> I am getting 2.76 times 10 to negative 11. Yes. Did you square it? No. The, no, the meters per second, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. That was uh, found on the equation sheet. That's just the equivalence uh, or equality between kilograms and nanometers. All right, and again, this is only for one atom. All right, so this is a joule per atom. When we talked about the energy being produced from like a combustion reaction, when we talked about enthalpy, you know, those were like a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand kilojoules per mole. But that's per mole. So let's figure out how many kilojoules per mole this is so we can compare and contrast. If you remember combustion of propane, that's natural gas. Uh, no, just um, propane, natural gas is methane, primarily. Uh, but propane was like 2044 kilojoules per mole, so 2,000 kilojoules per mole. So let's see how a nuclear reaction stacks up. So if we're going to go from atoms to moles, what number are we going to need? Avogadro is good. All right, so that's joules per atom. And I want to go to kilojoules per mole. All right, so... Let's do uh, Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. I got joules per mole, but I'm going to kilojoules. So in one kilojoule, there are what? 1,000 joules? All right, so now I got my kilojoules per mole. One point six six times ten to the tenth. You got a second. Got a third. Okay, third. All right. So one point six six times ten to the tenth is that a big number or a small number? Big number. That's a big number. So now we're talking about that's that's uh, ten to the ninth is a billion. So sixteen billion. 
kilojoules per mole. Propane produced 2,000 kilojoules per mole, so 16 billion kilojoules per mole. So yeah, a little bit more energetic. Nuclear reactions are a little tiny, about a billion times more energetic than a chemical reaction, all right? And that's, of course, why, how, why the sun produces so much energy, and it's kind of big. Um, but that's also why it's a, an effective source for energy for nuclear power plants. All right. So, that is how the sun produces energy instead of a, not the nuclear fusion, or excuse me, fission reaction, it does it through nuclear fusion. So here's one uh, fusion reaction, tritium and deuterium. Those are two isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the only element that has isotopes that also have names. Okay, hydrogen's like a big deal. Um, so H2 is called deuterium, H3 is tritium. They get forced together by the immense gravity that exists at the core of a star or our sun, and it produces helium and a neutron. And that neutron goes off and hits a hydrogen atom and produces deuterium or tritium. Um, and the process continues, all right? What's really uh, uh, good about uh, nuclear reactions is that you get, rea you get energy either way you go. You get energy, produce energy from nuclear fusion reactions going up. And then over here, from uranium back down to 56, you get energy by producing nuclear fusion reactions. Okay. Currently, that's what we use, uranium-235, to produce energy via nuclear fission reactions. I know your book talks a little bit about using nuclear fusion reactions to produce energy. Could we take hydrogen and fuse it to make helium um, and produce energy that way? Yes, theoretically we can. Right now, we're at the stage where we're not getting enough energy out of it. More, we're not getting more energy out of it than we're putting in. It's, we're losing energy in the process. But hopefully, maybe someday we get there because that would be a really nice energy source because producing lots of energy because it's a nuclear reaction, and the product is only helium. So helium's not radioactive, and we could use it for balloons.